So we'll have Joe go ahead and put the supervisory event back in. Once again, we see that the uh, device has been located. The buzzer is sounding, silencing the buzzer by pushing and following the flashing light on the enunciator. And then I'm also going to acknowledge, I'll just use the acknowledge all button this time, the supervisory event. So we're going to leave it in this condition, and now we're going to have Joe take a drive over, and uh, we're going to put some other uh, events into the system, and we'll come back to you. Again, we're going to do a, a separate uh, condition. We're going to put a, an alarm condition in along with the supervisory event. Joe's going to go over, and uh, I'm not quite sure which device he's going to do, but could end up being the same smoke detector we had before. What we're going to do is establish the difference between the two different events. And so now we've got a second event in the system. Again, pushing the flashing light allows us to establish the silence on the button or on the panel itself. And we're going to go ahead and stop annoying everybody with all of the alarm signals. When we do so, again, we get the signal silent event troubles. So now in the system, we have uh, multiple events, and the way that multiple events would be identified. Uh, you notice that the first priority is the alarm condition in the system. And if we want to see where the alarm condition is, we put the alarm tab. We can see in the building it's gone directly to the alarm. You notice that the supervisory condition um, has become a secondary item in the, in the menu. Again, pinching, zooming, and panning allows us to get a better reference onto where that device location is located. If we want to look at the supervisory event that was pr already in the system, I can click on the tab and go to the supervisory event tab and then by double tapping on the event itself will bring us back to where that supervisory event is located. So we can see that multiple events go back to the alarm, double tap, and it will bring us to the alarm event again. So multiple events show up in the system. All of the events are showing up in this list, unfiltered, alarm events filtered, and supervisory events filtered, and then the trouble events, which are the signal silence uh, that we've occur that occur on the system, show in the trouble menus. If we look at the campus view now, we'll see where those events are located, and they're differentiated with different colors of the banding you notice that the alarm event has red bands flashing around it, tells us where the alarm condition is. This is the smoke detector. And then this shows us where that valve tamper switch that's been closed on the system. And once again, if we go directly to the event, we can double click on it and it takes us back to a specific 2D floor plan where we can identify what's going on. Same information occurs. Transit Shed 2 is the building, the floor description, Moving to the supervisory tab, double clicking, shows me where the tamper switch is, it's transit shed one, and it's floor one. So that's how the system would look like with multiple events in the system. What we're going to do is go ahead and restore the system back to normal. System reset over on the enunciator. will clear the system. If all the events have been restored, the system will clear. If all the events have not been restored, any events remaining will stay in the system. I'm going to acknowledge all of the functions. You'll notice that the supervisory alarm was not cleared. It's still active and needs to be restored in the field. The condition is currently um, a supervisory event, so that does not self it has not restored at this particular junction. So Joe's going to go over and restore that event, and we'll see it when it comes back in. Okay, Joe's gone ahead and he's restored that event from the previous. Uh, uh, supervisory condition. You notice now that when the event has been restored it turns green, means it's good to go. The fire alarm panel itself, if you look over at the LCD, on supervisory and trouble events, once they've restored, they clear themselves. There's no user intervention. All that's left is now on the graphic enunciator the events that have been um, unacknowledged. So right now we can look at it. We had a supervisory event in and what's flashing now is that the vent has returned to its normal state. If we want to um, look at where that is again, that is on the transit shed. Oh, and it 
disappears because now it's green, it doesn't show on the, uh, on the menu anymore. So we're just going to go ahead and acknowledge that. Acknowledge the event. And now the system is now returned to normal. We have system normal. And then we're back to our campus plan. It gives us locations of the buildings. So that's a brief overview or a, an in-depth overview, whichever way you wish to take it, of the LCD graphic enunciator uh, combination units uh, located here at the San Diego port.